Hello, everyone, and welcome to day two of uh, MMVC 23. My name is Nelly Deutsch, and I'm going to introduce our speaker. So welcome, everyone. I'm glad you made it to our last presentation of the day. Our presenter is coming to us from the United States, and that's Jeff Cooper, uh, who's from Berkeley. Uh, he lived a block away from Robert Oppenheimer. At the age of 16, he started at Cal Berkeley. At 19, uh, he was diagnosed with bipolar and dropped out of school. Uh, he earned his uh, teaching credentials in English and English to speakers, to uh, second language learners, sorry, English as a second language certification and taught at Richmond High of Coach Carter fame. Unable to support his family on a teacher's salary, he moved to Forest Grove where he was the ed tech specialist for the College of Education at Pacific University. He volunteered at Tapped In for 15 years, helping teachers create virtual classrooms. He is currently trying to revive it at Global Clue so students may collaborate internationally. And of course, uh, it's also for teachers, not just for students. I was part of the TAP in um, venture and uh, it was absolutely amazing. So it gives me great pleasure um, to have you with us today, um, Jeff. And um, Nelly also says hi. So I'm just <laughs> helping her out here. So, oh, uh, you, you AI. Bots that are just like, yeah, but you look no. really good, Nelly. Your avatar <laughs> looks great, but you look greater. Uh, I'm old and I've got the things going on with like little sun coming through my shades here on my forehead. So there I am, if you like me better. Right. All right. Now, so, Jeff, if you want your, the minute you're ready with your presentation, feel free to bring it up. You've got everything you need. So, okay. Well, I'm not quite because I want to, I want to know, Nelly. Can we get people to show their pictures and also show their video and also give them, I mean, so that they can talk if they want to during my presentation, because I'd love to hear questions to get interruptions. You know, yes, I did that. Okay, so everybody can unmute themselves. But if um, you want, when you want, all right. Well, you can, we can Hi. do from now, if that's fine with you. So All anyone right, who wants great. to say hello, you can say hello or ask Jeff questions as he goes, uh, or you want your, um, you know, your focus, that's up to you. All right, here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop up the slideshow for the presentation. And you notice it's tinyurl.com. I'll talk more about that in a bit, but MNBC 23 slideshow JFC. I wonder what JFC stands for. Jeffrey Ferris Cooper. That's my name. Okay, so I'm going to go back and forth between the slideshow and doing some screen sharing. So we've already, you know, oh, when you when you click that link, you'll be ending up probably at the bottom of the presentation. And you'll see a slider bar on the left and you just got to come all the way back up to the top. And I'll give you a second to do it. I just clicked to the second slide, which is blank. Are you guys seeing this now? My blank slide? Yes, no, no maybe no. Nobody's no. seeing my blank slide? You're just no, seeing no. me. Oh, I got a screen. I'm going to screen share in a bit. Maybe I should start screen sharing now. Does that work? Because, you know, I want you to be able to do what you want. So let me get to screen sharing. Let's see, more. And we go share screen. And I'm going to, right now, I'm going to share this green there so there we go there i should be sharing am i sharing now can you see a, one of my blank things no, no, just it. make it larger if you could go into uh oh you're no, it's full oh. screen it's full screen oh is it it should be let me see what we got oh shoot you're only seeing i got i guess i shared the wrong screen so Hold on. Is that on a, on a, oh, it's on I, Firefox. You just, you need to click on the slide when you're on um, your slide. Well, I'm clicking my slide right now. That's not showing. So go Let into me, file. And, I'm going to stop share. I'm going to stop share. I'm going to try it again. 
Let's try this one more time. Come if on. If not, Frank. I can do it for you if you like. Oh, hold on. No, I, I, I'm, I'm a pro zoomer. I've done this before, so I, so far, let's just see what happens. Um, let's try this one. I've got several windows open. Do you see a blank slide now? Here we go. There we go. You should be seeing a blank slide. And now you should be seeing a slide of me as a kid. Are people seeing this? It's still small. Would you like me to screen share and I'll make it larger? Well, I'm just trying to figure out where I'm screwing up right now because mm -hmm. I'm obviously screwing up and I don't know why I'm showing. You're just seeing like the top bar. You're not We're seeing, seeing everything. We're seeing everything. We're seeing the bars at the top. We're seeing yes. the sides of the PowerPoint. We're seeing the middle, and it's really tiny. No, but you're not you seeing a big. Listen, go, Jeff. If go you ahead go and, into slide, I'll tell you where you go. Go into okay. slideshow on the right where you see Jeff's face. No, no. You, why, why did I'm going to come back out, and I'm going to take you. Take it no, to me. You don't need to. Time. You don't need to. You don't need to do it. Just go back to your screen share and I'll tell you what to do. Okay. If you right, want I'm to gonna go to yourself. screen share. Right. Go into that. And then look at the photo of Jeff on the right. Okay. Are you screen sharing? You're not doing that yet. Well, here's the deal. I'm seeing. Okay. Let me do it for you. And then we'll just, uh, is that okay if I do it? Oh, well, and, yeah, and I, but I always want to learn something new. And obviously I messed this one up. So I'm going to just see. That's that you okay. Can. Look, I'll show you what you can you see where I am right now? I'm going to show you what to do. Do you see it? Do you see where I am? Okay, let me let me minimize this. Just window. tell me if you see. Yeah, you oh. got it. Oh, I got you. you okay. you're, you're there. So if you see it, do you see where it says slide show? Do you see that word slideshow? It's probably yeah. grayed out for you, right? But when um, you go, oh, I just got black over it. Okay, black over it. Okay, so if you just click on it and you get full screen. Here we go. Got it? I'm there. Are you guys okay. seeing a full screen now? Let me stop screen sharing so you can do that. There, now you can do it. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Well, let me just introduce myself. Okay, let me see if I can get the screen share to go. But first of all, let me say that I'm really happy to be here, number one before I get into too much stuff about my presentation. Um, Nelly said a couple of days ago that we're all doctors here. I'm not. Uh, I got my, you know, she said. Jeff, uh, Jeff, please, I'd like to correct you. I never said that. I would never say that. Why would I say that? It's in, it's you been said it. It's you recorded. said it. Well, let me try and pull that screen share up again. Now I'm not even seeing. Oh, I know why, because I, I've got Zoom at full. Hold on. There's always something to see here. Let me just sort of back up and say, you know, we've had problems with Zoom a lot of times during this presentation, and there's always things because Zoom is a synchronous platform. And what I'm going to get to is an a, a polysynchronous platform called Tapped In, because that's where we want to be. We want to be at a place where you can log into one place and then do your meetings and not have to. Oh shoot, that's the wrong button there. Come on, let's get back over here. Get back. Here, here, and back to Zoom. I want to share. How's everybody doing today? Talk to me. Talk to me while I'm screwing up. Nobody wants to talk. I'm not a pedant. I'm not a sage on the stage. That's what I learned in uh, Rhetoric One from Charles Lytell, who talked about rhetoric a lot. Jeff, do you, do you see where it says slideshow at the top of your of your Google I, slide? I've got, no, I, I just tried screen sharing again. No, no, you don't screen share. Listen, do you see your photo on the right, on the top right? You see your photo, right? Then you see the word share. 
And then you see from the top right, right? And then yeah, you see I, I, slide I don't show. want to just I don't want to just share that one picture. I mean, eventually, but let me, I guess I can try and do it that way. Hold and on. then you look at the slideshow, you go to slide, you click on it, and then it's gonna click open there. Anyone with a link, I got you. I did all that already. I thought no, you go to the slideshow. Do you see the slideshow next to that? You click on the word slide show just click on it it's grayed out that yours is grayed out yes yeah. how could yours be grayed out i didn't do this you this is your presentation mine is google, not grayed out google did it i'm just saying but mine is not grayed out so let me screen share and then that's it that, yeah, I agree. And, yeah let me let let me put you in charge of the screen sharing and yeah, I'll that's do, it whatever there navigating it is. i can okay so i can okay. do that yeah all right. Well, what we're seeing now is the person that wasn't what I was looking at. But let me see if I can change this now to the next slide. Next. Here we go. All right. So what I've got now is me as a kid. That's me. Can you see me moving my mouse over me? I'm not looking at any chat box. I'm not hearing anybody. Can you see me? Yes, we see you. You're so okay. cute. Okay. That's also me over here. Yes, I used to be cute. This is my sister, Katie. This is my cousin, Patrick, who passed away of leukemia about oh. a year later. My cousin, Deirdre, who passed away about six years ago. And my brother, Brian. Uh, and then over here on the right, guess what? That's me, gra my grad pick. And my, uh, you know, I was uh, captain of the debate team, president of the forensics club, and... My career interest was to be a lawyer. Why did I want to be a lawyer? Let's go to the, oh, I got more family pics down here. Because why am I showing this? Because it's about the kids. What are we going to do with the kids? We're teachers. We're, you're all trainers of teachers. You're the ones that are helping them move into the future. Let's go to the next slide. Oh, shoot. See, I can make mistakes, too. Where am I? Hey, you wouldn't believe the amount of mistakes I've made today already. And it's what? Only noon. Nobody's tried to get in. By the way, I tried getting more people in here, but it just hasn't worked. What do you or, mean? What have you done? No, well, I invited like a, a, you know, a number of friends and what have you, and nobody's come. Let's get to here. All right, go ahead. I'll tell you what. Go ahead and share now. Okay, next one. Okay. I'm on the next one here. Have you, are you sharing yet? Yep. Okay, cool. That's me and my mom, Nicolette Mandel. That's my dad over here. He was a, uh, an attorney. My mom later became an attorney. Uh, he was also Alameda County Supervisor for 17 years. He also was an alternate delegate for Hubert Humphrey in the 68 election. I don't know if any of you from India heard about the 68 Democratic National Convention. But it was a doozy. Uh, Mayor Daly set the cops out on, the yippies, Abby Hoffman, protesters. And imagine what the Democratic Convention is going to be next year, like next year. I've got a playlist here uh, for my presentation, which relates to different things. All right. Can you get to the next slide, Nelly, or do I have to move it for you? You can right. move it for me. Perfect. You did it. All right. So. I went to Cal. Uh, I dropped out because I'm bipolar. I had a psychotic break. Back then it was called manic depression. And um, I spent some time in my mom's law office. And then when I was eight, uh, no, I was 22, I rode my bicycle from Berkeley to Boulder, Colorado to get my head together and went back to Cal. And my first semester back, I did a 15-minute Hamlet by Tom Stoppard. Does anybody know that play? Does anybody I know? I know Tom, yes. Do you know the Reduced Shakespeare Company? No, but I, I know Tom Stoppard. Okay, well, the Reduced Shakespeare Company is Jess Winfield, who is right up here. Adam Long is playing Tiny Tim, because this is me as Scrooge during the Dickens Fair. We went on to the Renaissance Fair. I could talk about that, but not now. But here I am, you know, I am thy father's spirit, to avenge thy most foul and my most foul and unnatural murder. 
And there's me as the grave digger where I wanted to go. I asked Charlie Bloomer, the director, hey, can I say, oh, look, like Curly from the Three Stooges. He said no. <laughs> here's here's some friends. This is me, I think, as Osric or Fortinbras. I played six. I, this is Fred Kenimer, who passed away 10 years ago. And there's a Friends of Fred page on Facebook. And, you know, down here, it's one no touch. This was my first beard. Next slide. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I had a great time at Cal, but then I had another breakdown. I mean, my 20s were living hell. So here, this pic I, picture I'm entitling Fear and Loathing in California. This is me when I was younger, had my teeth. I don't now. That's another story. And my ex, Brenna. But you kind of see fear and loathing on our faces. And does, does anybody from India know who this is? The silence is deafening. Is that a no? No. That's, that's Raul Duke from Hunter S. Thompson's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. That's why I call myself a gonzo educator, because he was a gonzo journalist. He took on the man and he ended up committing suicide because he felt there was just so much horrible things going on in this world. He couldn't take it anymore. It was a very depressing day for me. Now, these are my three cute kids. That's Liam. That's Nora. And that's Owen. OK, it was taken last week. Not quite. That's Liam, who is now 28. Nora, who is 25 and Owen, who is 22. Then over here on the right, I've got my sister Katie and her family, her daughters, uh, Carly and uh, Renee, because it's all about family. It's all about people. And, you know, we care about our families. But guess what? As educators, <laughs> we've got a huge family. All right, next slide. When I went to Berkeley, I learned quite a bit about capitalism. And there are these books written by Seymour Melman called Pentagon Capitalism. And in it, in 1970, he predicted that the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union would bankrupt the Soviet Union by 1990. Anybody remember Ronald Reagan saying, tear down that wall, Mr. Gorbachev? Well, he was accurate to the day. Soviet Union, Ukraine became separate. In 93, there were like a dozen nukes in, in Ukraine, in the Ukraine. It was called the Ukraine back then. Russia, because it's still called Russia now, asked Ukraine, hey, if you, and I don't speak Russian. And by the way, you know, I'm, well, I'll get to that in a minute. They asked Ukraine, the Ukraine said, hey, Ukraine, can you give us back those nukes? We're a little bit concerned about you having them so close to us. Sure, if you promise never to invade us. Well, look what happened. Okay, now notice this book over here called After Capitalism. That's Melman's last book. Oh, by the way, in Pentagon Capitalism, Melman said, you know, I said 1990 was going to be the last year for the Soviet Union. He said, but our, our infrastructure is stronger, but we won't last past 2025. Anybody out there know what this year's uh, national debt is for the United States? Off the top of your head, should I tell you? Silence means yes, we're about $30 trillion in debt. And there's all sorts of politics about that. So we're close to defaulting and going bankrupt. After Capitalism is Melman's last book where he talks about what do you do? How do you progress? How do you make society work? And then there's a book called Revolution at Berkeley. This book down here, is anybody familiar with Jürgen Habermas, a German philosopher, and his book Theory and Practice? Anybody? Okay, well, this was a book that I also studied at Berkeley, and I've got links on my page there so that you can either purchase that and the other ones you, i've got internet archives of course you can go i i just bought an, a hard copy of revolution at berkeley but um habermas in theory and practice writes free and open communication leads to a free and open society does anybody want to argue with that 
The next thing he talks about is how the United States can't have free and open communication because we were based on John Locke's on theory and practice, which is based on private property, which is a rhetoric. What's the difference between rhetoric and philosophy? Well, rhetoric is designed to just sell soap. Look at America. All we do is advertise, sell stuff, buy stuff. The French Revolution was based on Rousseau's not, uh, philosophy of common good. That makes more sense to me. It certainly made more sense to Habermas. How do we move from a whole thing about me, 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 my, my, my to, hey, yeah, my family matters. I do matter, but so does the rest of the world. So do the kids down the block. Next slide. Okay, here's a fun one. Now, uh, I got I, I've got the link over there. Now, does that thing hyperlink for you people? Can any of you you see the link over here on the right? You can't. You can't click on anything. You can't click on anything. Well, I'll, I'll come back and I'll put it into chat in a second. But guess what? This is my. I know. I know you. You. You doctors. It's publisher parish. When I worked at Pacific University. Because of my English background, Seth Agbo, who is from Uganda, had to make these, uh, you know, publications, Publisher Parish. Who edited them for him? Me. Why? Because that's who I am. I like helping people. This is the only thing I've ever gotten published. And guess what? I still have hard copies. I'm the cover of the 2004 NETC circuit. Now, guess what? You see over here in the, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing with a thing. Look over here where it says Internet Archive Wayback Machine. The server went down years ago. It doesn't exist anymore. Things from the past on the Internet are very difficult sometimes to still access because the servers go down. That's something for all of us to consider when you look to the future. Think about the past. Now, can I scroll down this screen or not? No, I guess I can't. That's okay. Let's just, oh, by the way, do you see, can you see my entire business card here? Because I've got my name, my G email address, and my phone number. Can people, can, can, can you kind of minimize that screen a little bit? No, that's how it is. Okay. How, all right. But, but we can but, see it. We can see everything. Okay. But you could, you could see my email address and phone number, right? Yes. Okay, now you might be wondering, what the heck is with this picture up here in the upper right? Well, I got laid off in 2005 from uh, Pacific University, and I'm going to tell you why. For budget cuts in politics. And I ended up, like, it was one of the first, one of the few times in my life that I really cried. And that started me back into depression, because once I became a teacher, I wasn't depressed. I was focused. I was doing my work. I was helping kids. Um, this article talks about when I was teaching at Richmond High and how in 1996 I got my kids published internationally using a fledgling internet. And I've actually got one of the projects here. This one you 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 won't be able to see the only thing. Here's where my kids got published, you know. And later I get letters back from kids that went on to college thanking me for teaching them how to think, how to write and how to improve their self-esteem. Because I'm not a teach to the test kind of guy. And back, back then, NCOB, no child left behind. It was all about testing. And guess what? That's killing education. Even in 91, when I was a sub in, a, in Piedmont High in California, I was proctoring a math class. And, uh, the kids were all allowed to use calculators even back in 91. Well, you want to talk about technology ruin edu ruining education. I'm going to get back to how we fix education in a minute. One of the kids' calculators broke. I said, well, what's the problem? He said, well, what's 48 divided by 16? I said, you don't know? He goes, no. I, I asked the class, what's 48 divided by 16? Every single one of them went to their calculators. Now, I ask you, a group of doctors, what's 48 divided by 16? Silence? Really? Nobody, Nelly, you must know 48 divided by 16, right?
Danilo, Balin, Jabrilin, hi. Three, okay, I'm getting it in chat. Okay, great. They couldn't do it in their heads. I was doing multiplying three-digit numbers in second grade. I, it's, it's my fault for not, I mean, I'm thinking you guys are going to talk, and you're. I'm just looking at the screen. I'm not looking at the, the Zoom chat box at the moment. But how disappointing was that to me as a teacher, knowing that students couldn't do math in their heads in 10th grade in 91? And now we're concerned about, well, what's going to happen with AI? What's going to happen with all this, too? Back in the day, they were concerned about using pens because they used to use slate and chalk. You know, every innovation people complain about, but then there's the future. So let's go to the next slide. Here we get to tapped in. This is the virtual environment that I think you people are going to like. Nelly and I met there. Okay. And you're going to have to be vocal with me. Have any of you ever been or seen or know anything about tapped in? Because like I say, I'm not looking at the chat box now. And if there are questions, you got to ask them orally. You can unmute yourselves, everybody. Yes, please unmute yourself. Oh, I see there are two chat things down here. Yeah, I got two. Yeah. So Danilo and Flamin both cool for them. All right. This is the tapped in center. Here's Azusa Pacific University. It was a client. And there are other buildings around here, all right? In each building, there were rooms, there were floors, you had private offices. Now, can you see up here where it's kind of blurry, but it says K-12 student campus. That was a campus for K-12 teachers. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you something about that campus. But over here on the right, I'm going to show you BJB's office. Okay. These are image notes, like this picture down here. Basically, you add, you got a welcome screen, you've got notes, either text or images, you got files, you've got a threaded discussion board, you've got passageways to other rooms and a whiteboard. Now, if you think about Facebook for a minute, I call it Facebook because I don't, I'll get into it in a minute. All it is is a fancy threaded discussion board. It's got some advantages with ads. Big deal. Down here, I've got live chat. Now here's where we get into ESL. I just purchased, and I'll get to this more later. Well, I heard just uh, about a year ago or, or less that Google came up with this thing where you've got speech to instant translation. Well, what? Uh, what I'm picturing is this, and I'll get more into it on the next slide. Let's go to it. Global. No, that's not the picture I wanted. That's, well, I guess, no, that is. Yeah, no, no, go back. I have a whole, if, if you go to globalclue.org, you could pull the whole page up for yourself, all right? But here's what, here's what my plan and hope is for Global Clue. Thank you, Nelly. Okay, here's my rhetorical question, being an old rhetoric major. Oh, while I'm at the rhetoric major part, let me, a, a brief paralipsis. I hope you guys know what paralipsis means, it's an aside. And again, um, rhetorical question, would the world be a better place if everybody could talk, learn, and work with each other? It's rhetorical because I'm pretty sure most would answer yes, but that's impossible. This page devotes itself to making itself possible. Okay, I'm going to kind of skim over this a bit, but basically I'm talking about the early days of the internet had moves and muds and eventually what were called moves. Tapped in as a move, multi-user virtual, educa virtual education world. And then I have a link here to that article that I wrote. And then I talk a bit about working at Pacific University. Okay, keep scrolling down a bit. Now, I've got more stuff about you know, other things like I've got, all right, when tapped in closed, I was again devastated. It closed in 2012, but I've been helping people there for 15 years. Well, I've had a Facebook account since 2006, so I've been helping people there. But I end up in what's, what I have termed as Zuckatraz, and I'll get to Zuckatraz in a minute. I get called out because of why? Facebook is run by bots and run very poorly by bots, I may add. We'll get to that in a second. 
So I'm, I have a link here to Nelly's thing. Notice I got Nelly here in my uh, in my page. You're welcome, Nelly. Okay, so will we scroll? You want me to go back to? No, to I want the... you to scroll. I want you to scroll all the way to the bottom at this point because you guys can look at this later. Notice here, I've got a link to my Facebook page. I've also got a LinkedIn page. But here's the most important thing. I've got the source code. I'm the only one, uh, except for a couple of scammer programmers who said that they, you know, upgraded. So because it needs 10 years of upgrading to get it to run. It's open source code. All right. And here's my contact information again, my phone number again. Let's go to the next screen. So go back to the slides, right? Yeah. If I can find them. Okay. And next screen. Next one. So this is what I'm talking about. Scroll down a bit. Oh, this is my global. I'm sorry. Never mind. Just leave this here for a second. I created a GoFundMe page to get this thing running. As a matter of fact, I applied to be on Shark Tank for it because here's my goal. Once we get tapped in up and running again, my goal is to not have it on one server, but to make it freeware for K-20 public schools. How are we going to do that? I'll explain it in a bit. But the idea is this. Every school district around the world can install this on their own server for free. And kids from the first day of school using whatever chat technology we're going to put into the Java chat, that's where the, that's where the money's going to start coming from. They're going to donate their things to this platform so that they can have their own because nobody wants to use Zoom in the future. You guys all talked about how expensive things is. Imagine if you're at University of New Delhi or whatever university you're at in India. How much would it be worth to you to have a platform that you could do everything for free? I'm trying to create a nonprofit foundation. Again, this is the future. This is the rest of my life. This is what I've dedicated my life to. It's my life work, my one bucket list item. How much would it be worth to that university? But here, more important, how much would it be worth to Bill Gates? Let me tell you something about Bill Gates. He has a reputation of being you know, magnanimous towards schools because he gives a million dollars here to a scholarship fund, whatever. My school district pays $70,000 a year to run MS office. Ridiculous. You know what $70,000 means? That's a teacher's salary. Let's stay on this slide for a minute. That's a teacher's salary. I want Bill Gates to have their own Version. It's going to be called Global Clue because tapped in is dead. Global, long live Global Clue. That's my thing. So we'll have a central Global Clue building. Then the next to it will be a Microsoft partner building. And then Microsoft on their own server can run their own. And guess what? Instead of the school district paying 70000 Bill Gates can write it off his taxes. I'm not the tax man. I'm not the government, but here's the long-term plan. The more companies that chime in, the more tax write-offs they get, the less government we need, and the more active engagement we get with the kids. Let me stop again about the whole kids communicating the first day of school. Picture little Jimmy or Wang Chung or Pablo Escobar. Go back to the tapped in slide for a second. First day of school, here's your lesson plan. All right, kids, draw a picture. Okay, you drew a picture, now go out and play, have fun. Come on back. Now I want you, with the help of a third or fourth grader, whoever you're collaborating within your physical school, to start telling a story about that picture. And that's coming up on the screen. And guess what happens? After that day is over, that email, that, that, that story, first of all, the picture gets taken back to the parent. But it's also up in the kids' digital file in their K-12 classroom, which they're starting the first day of their own digital portfolio. And I know you guys all know about digital portfolio. First day of school, and mom and dad could see the kids got a picture. 
and he's got a story starting. Pretty good, huh? More importantly, you've involved the parents in the kids' education. Day two of school. Okay, draw another, make another picture, go play, come back and continue the story. But this time you're hooking up with a kid around the world that's also hooked up with tapped it with boob. I'm gonna I'm gonna say tapped in for the rest of my life because I love Patty Shank, who was a programmer. Uh she just did a phenomenal job, but they're doing their story in their own language with their own pictures. And they're sharing them with you. And the words are coming up on the screen in both languages simultaneously. And guess what? You know that kids don't learn language, right? What do kids do? All right, professors, tell me, what's the right word? What do kindergartners do with language? Do they learn language? Thank you from Plumman. Plumman, you are entitled to one of the copies because you might be wondering what I have this box back here for. I've got the last remaining hard copies of this in the universe. Well, I don't know about the whole universe, but at least in Forest Grove, and well, I'm gonna say probably the world. You guys figure out where I live, send me a self-addressed stamped envelope and I'll work out getting stuff too. But I saw Plumman come up with the answer first. Yes, you acquire language. I'm trying to put everybody out of work that is an ESL teacher and they'll become an EAL teacher because think about it for a minute. What's gonna happen if you have EAL from kindergarten? You're gonna now develop PBL project-based learning and problem-based learning. Think about this for a minute. The first days of class, you've started a bilingual book. Remember, all kids love learning till they hit third grade when everything's all about testing. You start them out with this. Now, think about this. I, you know, I've got a video somewhere. My friend who is a, a, a ranger has this a video about how there are 300,000 homeless vets. Okay, there are kids in Uganda that need books. There are kids all around the world who need whatever they need. If you get the kids involved and actually becoming friends with kids around the world from the first day of school, they're going to talk about what their problems are as they go. You're developing problem based learning and project based learning because you've got the parents involved. What could we do in this neighborhood? What could we do in this world? What could we do in this state? Imagine the possibilities. Let's go. Okay. And this is my, this is my, you can donate to me. I mean, it's not necessary now. Go on to the next slide. This is what I do. I, I, I had an attack of the clones the other day. Somebody pretended to be my friend, Will Sears. I went on. First language acquisition is not the same as second. We're learning. Okay. I'm sure there's a lot more to it. But I'm saying if it's certainly not being practiced now. How many schools do you know of? I heard, I'll come back to chat, I guess. Or you want me to come back to the text box? I'd rather hear from you because it's just easier for me to talk and listen to you. I'll shut up. Go ahead, I'll shut up and I'll, I'll wait on this slide for a minute. Come back to me. All right. Hello, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, as I said, uh, Treffen was talking about first language acquisition, which is a natural uh, process of learning. However, I, I am from Africa. I've learned English uh, as a to be a teacher. So the context I learned in was English as a foreign language. So at college, uh, teachers taught me explicitly about grammar and uh, other things. So second langu language uh, learning, and especially foreign, foreign language learning in English, uh, in countries uh, uh, where, uh, where it is a foreign language, like Tunisia or Algeria, for example, this country, right. we have to learn English explicitly. Okay, so well, let me, let me stop you there. You learned in college. I started learning Spanish in seventh grade with Mr. Norm Serafin, and he would come up in the middle, front of the class and have us conjugate verbs. Boy, ba, spa, vamos, by span. Estoy, estás, estás, estamos, estás, están. Puedo hablar en español un, un tal vez, pero mucho tiempo hablo en spanglés. Porque 
no puedo enseñar, no puedo, uh, yeah, I can't think in Spanish. Can you think in English, Henda? No, probably not. You are codifying. And that's why basically all of the people here, your language is first something else. Most of the, I mean, all the Indian speakers, you learn Punjabi first. But kindergartners acquire languages much easier. They're not learning it, they're acquiring it, okay? That's my point. You get them at the very young age. Also, there's advantages like cuneiform. In Chinese, from what I've read, they learned math much better than uh, Americans because cuneiform has something to do with the way it's done, so they get it quicker. So the fact that you started late, you never will acquire English. You've learned it. You might be fit. Certainly you're fluent English proficient, but as an ESL teacher, I know you're not a native speaker just hearing your voice. I like to guess people's accents when I hear them. But wouldn't it be much better for you in the future, like when you give a presentation to speak, what's the, what's the name of your first language? I speak Arabic. Arabic. A Arabic. Well, yeah. is there is there one Arabic language or dialects too, right? No, dialect. Tun I'm from Tunisia. I'm from Tunisia. Tunisian okay. dialect. Oh, you're the Tunisian, because I think I posted up, because I looked for you, and there was one from Tunisia. I mean, send me a friend request. <laughs> yeah, Oops. I sent you, but they said we, are, uh, we don't have much, many uh, friends. Yeah. In yeah, we'll have to figure that out. Facebook's been screwing up lately, and it really pisses me off because uh, I tried to upload some photos. Facebook's got problems. But I say one of the major problems with Facebook is that they have no responsibility. In this system, everybody be responsible. Because like here, I led this woman on for a couple of days. She was a scammer. Let's just, I'm not even going to go over this slide right now. Let's go to the next one. I was having fun with her. But I got rid of her. Okay, go to the next slide. This is more of her about, oh, we're the Social Security Administration. Hey, have you heard about the $90,000 grant? No, I didn't. Blah, blah, blah. Here she is. I sent her a dick pic. <laughs> you see my dick pic there on the lower right? That's a guitar pic with the word dick on it. Just for fun. I can have fun with these people. Go to the next slide. Okay. The final thing on this one was basically there's a difference between hacked and being cloned. Okay, and now what I really want to do is get over to my other real presentation thing. So uh, let's go to the next slide. I, I don't even know if there is a next slide. Yeah, so there's ZuckySucky.com. That's one of my domains. But I want you to close this slide, and there's another slide I want to open. Okay, I want to. I want to. There's just, nothing. Uh, I, I know. I want to get back to my screen. My my computer. I want I want to just end this screen share for right now. So let's just end the screen share. Okay. And now what I want to do is I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to go. Where am I going to go? Here. One second. Yeah, the thing is, I want to screen share what my screen. Yeah, let's let me share my screen and see if I can do it again. I'm going to come back to Zoom. I'm going to be really upset with myself if I can't screen share better this time. I've never had this problem before, but again, you know, that's one of the problems. So I go share screen and I want to share this one. All right, are you seeing this now? Yes, Bill's we see 21st, it. First century to 21st century collaborative learning communities. Yeah, that's right. Way that better. was the article that I taught. Now, natural reader. I had never heard of natural reader till like last week when Nellie told me about it. I was so impressed by it. And apparently they're in Vancouver, A, eh? Canada, A. Eh? I, I left a message for him. He never called me back. But picture that being in the chat box of Tapped In. Imagine them having a natural reader building because everybody's talking money, money, money. No, remember, we're getting this to be free for educators. All right? 
Now, how do I get rid of that top bar so I can click on my next thing and see if I can? There's other sorts of virtual worlds. Here's, a, I think this is Second Life, maybe. There's also no, in world. That's, um, that's Cyber Lounge. How that's, do I get rid of this the top bar so I can easily? You just go into uh, the X there on your browser. There's an X and you just click on the X. Where, where? there. Direct uh, my in the box in the box. There's a box, not there. I'm not. Oh, I got to get back to Zoom. Hold on. You are on Zoom. Do you want to stop screen sharing? No, I want to screen share. But you notice that that black box up at the top it says more. Um. I want to get rid of this big black box at the top. We don't so that see I can, that. I can't see the net. You don't see the big black box, but I do. No. Oh, I and see. I, I want to get to the next slide. Well, here, let me go over here because I can see this. Poorteachers.org. This is where I started. One of the places I started. It had Newsday. That's how I got my kids published. Trackstar. You're talking about a way to track uh, net sites. Um, Quiz Star, Ruby Star, it doesn't exist anymore. Now I'm uh, going to Ruby Star on. does exist. Okay, well that's good to hear. But now what I'm doing here, I want to show you guys this. This is Monsters Game. This is my World Four level character. Why would I show you a game? Well, I'll tell you why. I've been here since 2006, and the game has died. I'm still there, and a few other people are there. Here, I'm going to go to the graveyard real quick. I'm going to show you something really quick. Ooh, I got a free man amulet. That's very rare, but here we go. So I'm just going to click on here, and I'm going to find somebody to hit. I want to show you what happens when I hit somebody. I'm going to go to high score, and let's just, because I'm a vampire, so I, I attack werewolf. So I'm just going to pick a random werewolf here, and here we go. There is this werewolf here, and I'm going to attack him. I can now attack him, and bam, I have attacked him. Look at what happens. Here are all my stats. Here are all their stats. Here are my weapons. There are his weapons. My amulet, he doesn't have anything. My rings. My sentinel, this adds me. My, my sentinel's name is Biggest Dickus, against I touch. My accomplishments, my ancestor battles, and here's the battle report. I scored 7,955 hit points to his 27. Pretty impressive, right? Well, of course, because nobody's playing. He hasn't played in years. Now, this is where it gets really interesting for the future. Here are all my attacks with all the hit points. That's all there is. Now, you're all pros. You think any kid wants to play a game like this? Heck no. But what if we get M's World or some... The you know reality game thing to turn these hits into a visual representation that could reignite this game, right? Disagree with me here? Do I have to come back to chat? Do I have to you know listen? Think about it for a minute. You got this game that's dying. I'm trying to convince them the, the owners of this game. Hey, do it this way. Because this doesn't work, but it will also teach the math because here I can go, for example, I go to the town, I go to the store, and notice here I've got 228,000 gold. I can buy things. I don't need to buy a sword right now, but why don't, why don't I go take a look at potions, for example? Well, this costs zero. I haven't bought it, but let's say I want to buy a, 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 a 20 thousand uh 25 level potion i don't notice i bought a hundred of these but let's say i wanted to buy 10 of them that would be what they cost a thousand each that would be ten thousand dollars you could start teaching them doing some math in their head but there's more to it than that but i don't want to spend too much time on that let me get on to another screen yeah that's showing about mana this is a screen i really want to show you guys Back in my day, I used a site called Snip URL, which allowed me to create shortcuts. Notice that I've created a number of shortcuts for the for for this conference. 
you should get an account here. I, I pay for it. You don't need to pay for it. But basically, when you got a link for something, you make a make a shortcut and you move on. I thought I put this up because I remember we got wordclouds.com. That's what the name of the site was. I just can't get, well, you know what I'm going to do? Here, here we go. Here, no. Oh, you got rid of it. You got rid of it. Uh, here's something you guys should know about MOOCs, multi-user open source online classes. They're free. They're online. They exist now. Oh, here's my, I have two GoFundMe pages. This one's for me to go to the Democratic National Convention next year. Now we come back to the Snopes article that was written because people wrote on Facebook um, a bunch of stuff. And this guy is at Snopes. He's the head of Snopes. And he argued back in 2012 that people aren't hacking accounts, coining accounts. He doesn't know because he hasn't been there. I still have to write the man an article. He doesn't go there, but I will. But one of the reasons Snopes doesn't do enough because he can't pay the people. But if we have people volunteering and say, hey, no, that's false, donate it to Snopes. If we have people working together, you know, like I say, from the school with the parents, we can like, all right, let's say Mr. Billionaire. Mr. Billionaire says, I want to buy a yacht. I say, okay, what are you going to do with it? Well, I'm going to get babes and my fellow billionaires and go around. I said, oh, well, that sounds like a $250 million value added tax. Oh, well, what if I... Uh, what if I, I picked up a bunch of homeless kids and people and took them around the world as a homeless shelter? Oh, well, that sounds like a $250 million tax deduction. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking big picture here. We can, in the future, use this stuff. Let me get over here. Can you still see me? Can you still see my screen? Yeah. All right. So I come back to that. We come back to that. I pretty much let me have, let me see have I missed any slides? Um, oh, Urban Dictionary. I've got a couple words that I created. One was scamjelical, and the other was Zuckatraz. Zuckatraz is Facebook prison. And oh, I, I do have to show you something funny, which is uh, I'm going to go to my zuckysucky.com page. I've been jailed so many times. And I just, and I'm sick of these ads for all these. Have you Camp Lejeune thing? I said, so I had the Zuckbox falsely sent you to Zuckatraz. You may be entitled to compensation. This meme circled around during COVID on Facebook. It's Jeffrey Dahmer saying, no one's going to tell me how many people I can have for Thanksgiving dinner. I circulated it. And two years later, the box found me, put me into Zuckatraz because it was a dangerous individual or organization. Well, first of all, he's not dangerous anymore. He's dead. But then they put me in again and again, like six times they put me into Zuckatraz for a meme I had posted years ago. I got my revenge. I did a box of peeps. And then at the top, I wrote the meme, no one's going to tell me how many peeps I can have for Easter. And I signed it Jay Dahmer. That one has got another one I got through in. Do, do, don't swallow anything Satan rams down your throat. Remember, Jesus comes first. Joel Osteen. You know who Joel Osteen is? He's a scam jellical. He's one of the guys that has this mega church. He, uh, during the Houston floods, wouldn't let the people come in that were displaced until he got shamed into doing it. The man owns a $14 million mansion. Let me finish up so I have a few minutes so people can still ask questions. Um, um, Jeff, well, we'll just, time just is one more. passing and we're... We've I know, we got one more, one more minute. In. Let me close it up with this. Okay. You know there's a writer's strike for TV right now that's supporting the actor's strike. And meanwhile, the CEO says, you're asking for too much. He makes $45 million a year. My suggestion with this is we as we build it up, we could have a server so that people can make their own TV shows in their own neighborhoods, share it with people around the world. We need to get the world together to solve the problems. Oh, I think 95% of the world is great. 95% of people are great. We've just allowed the jerks to take over. So I will now hand it back to Nelly and thank you all for coming. Can you stop screen sharing, Jeff? Oh, sorry. I will stop okay. sharing. So we and can I'm see. Back. I wanted to hear. I have a question. I want yes. to hear 
uh, about Tapton. I want to hear what you're doing. I saw the donation and um, I'd like to know if I know Tapton, but I want to know if other people understand what it is and uh, its value. And I don't, I'm not sure that you, you got through to us. All uh, right. Tapton is a vir multi-user virtual environment. It's, it's, it's Java, right? It used to be C++, but you create virtual uh, rooms and you could hold discussions in there. And you have, in my own virtual office, I had files. I had a threaded discussion board. So that basically you log in to tapped in and then you go to your office. Not like with Zoom where you have to do a separate login every time and work your way around. You have an account there and it's free. And you build and you collaborate and you go to, I had a math resources class. I had a science resources class and we'd bring things in and we'd share information. We'd collaborate ongoing all the time. And every day, the second you log in, one thing I didn't get into was all the bots that are dealing with stuff now trying to like solve, like I had a credit card, somebody tried to scam it the other day. I had to deal with bots in order, but finally I got talked to a guy at my bank and got it cleared up. Bots don't think. And if we get tapped in running on local servers, you are going to be responsible for what's said and done there. We're going to take the power away from the bots, but we're going to bring in the AI because <clears throat> chat, GBT, GPT, and these other things are going to want to have a place where people can log in and use their system. They're going to have to donate it to the places where we're going to decide as a nonprofit that it's going to be free, and they're going to be able to charge other people for it. It's going to be on a sliding scale. Right now, everybody has to pay $5 for the same pair of socks. That's ridiculous. There should be different prices. There should be a sliding scale. I got to go back to Marx for just a bit and say, from each according to their ability to each according to their need. We need a lot of stuff to happen in this world. This is the wave of the future. Because if you get kids learning together from the first day of school, maybe in 40 years, we won't have blown up the planet. Okay, I didn't get to Google domains, which is, um, I've got a number of domains that I can have people already install their own server on and not spend money. I'm, I want people to con continue to communicate with me. Oh, very important. I got, I got, I got to show you. I've, I'm on, on my Facebook page. Where did I put it? It's probably. At Jeff, the we don't have time to go there now. No, here, here. I'm, I'm going to put this up in. I'm not even going to put up the chat. shortcut. I'm going to put up the link. This is the, this is the presentation that I made on Monday. Don't comment here because this chat goes away. But the. The thing can be commented on for the rest of hopefully Facebook's life. There you go. Thank you. Thank and you. I have a There's also a question. That. Maybe Henda yeah. can ask you the question on Facebook, and that is uh, the files uh, that you add to your office, do they stay there? And of course, uh, the answer is yes, right? They stay there, and you can make them private or public, and you can lock the door to your office or leave it unlocked. You got a lot. Yeah, it's more a great idea. 